All right, so welcome everybody to the Wednesday, February 16th teaching and learning call. I'm Wilma Hodges, I'll be the facilitator today. And I've pasted the Etherpad link into the chat. So if you've not already gone there and signed in, please do. Um, go ahead and do a screen share just so we have something to look at in the recording. All right, so you guys should be seeing my screen now. Um, okay, great. So welcome everybody, and um, thanks for joining us today. Um, as usual, we start off with a few announcements. So I would like to introduce um, <clears throat> the, new, the new teaching and learning facilitator, Dee Dee Hurricane from Marist. I, I know most of you probably already know Dee Dee, but um, she's going to be helping out with the teaching and learning calls. So right now it's me, Charles, and Dee Dee, and we'll be kind of tag teaming. Um, the facilitation of the calls from uh, meeting to meeting. So uh, welcome her to that role and she'll be helping with the agendas and things. So if there's a topic that you wanted to um, to get on the agenda or JIRA or something, feel free to contact Dee Dee as well as um, Charles or myself to uh, get that put on the agenda. So um, thank you Dee Dee for agreeing to help us um, keep these calls going. Happy to. Yep. Do you want to say anything? Uh, just that I'm glad to be a part of the team as some people I do know in the in the call, some I do not. So I'm looking forward to getting to know you. And I'm sure this is going to be a really good positive experience moving forward. OK, great. Um, all right, so another quick announcement. Um, we did move Sakai days to March and uh, there was a survey that went out to try to find the right days. Um, of the week and uh, week of the month. So uh, what settled out from that is um, that it looks like Monday and Tuesday, March 21st and 22nd, will be the days for Sakai days. So they're going to run kind of in two blocks. There'll be a two hour block in the morning from 10 a.m. Eastern to 12 p.m. And then another afternoon block from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. And again, those are Eastern times, and I believe that's after daylight savings. So the um, time change, I think, is a little different um, if folks in Europe or other places have not changed times yet. Um, so uh, be sure to check your, your uh, time zone calendar <laughs> to make sure that you know, we have the right times. But it'll definitely be 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. and 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. Eastern. So um, keep that in mind and mark your calendars. Um, it's going to be, we're still kind of developing the agenda. I'll put the link in there. I forgot to put it in for this morning, but um, <clears throat> I'll add it later today. Um, and uh, you, you can feel free to add topics to the Sakai Days agenda if you like. We're, we're hoping to have um, some big group discussion, but also breakout sessions. So if people are interested in a particular topic, um, we can kind of break into smaller groups during those times to kind of dig into some of those topics in more depth. So that's the idea, and um, we'll be kind of shaping up the agenda a little more um, over the next few weeks. Um, <clears throat> I know that we had tentatively um, scheduled Xerti for today, but I wasn't sure, Inga, because I hadn't confirmed with you and I didn't want to put you on the spot. So I figured we would do the Xerti demo a different week when we have a, more time to advertise it and maybe get more people to attend so that they can see it. Um, so for today, I thought we would um, just hold off on that. Um, we'll schedule it for later in, in March or April. But um, the uh, the Confluence pages is something that um, that we need to take a look at. I thought this would be a good opportunity for us to do that as a group. Um, but before we move on to that, does anybody else have any other announcements before I leave that section of the agenda? Nope. Okay. Um, so Confluence. Um, you may be aware that we recently moved from Confluence Server to Confluence or Atlassian Cloud. So we're on the, the cloud version of Confluence as well as Jira now. So as part of that move, 
um, let me, I pulled up Confluence here. So this is the new landing page for Confluence. This dashboard page was one that I set up and I made sure that all these links were sort of updated to their respective areas. Um, so this has, has been uh, kind of link checked to make sure that it's all relevant information. And we've got some of the working groups here. So the working group for this group is um, the teaching and learning space. And the DG just means discussion group. That's how it was set up originally. I, I didn't go through and rename a bunch of stuff because um, I didn't really think it was that pressing to, to rename all the spaces. Um, what I'm more concerned with is the content in the spaces. So I did quite a bit of archiving when I moved stuff from server to cloud. I archived a whole bunch of spaces that were no longer in use. Like a lot, a lot of contrib tools had spaces and there were conferences, old conferences that had spaces, all that stuff I archived. But um, I did not archive content within a space that's still active like this one. Um, so this page is pretty updated because um, I keep it um, pretty much up to date and the other facilitators also go in here and, and update these links. So this page and then um, these two, the, the YouTube recordings and the Etherpad notes, those all stay pretty up to date. This JIRA filter, I fixed it so it pulls uh, new JIRAs automatically. So anything with the UX, or I'm sorry, the TNL label um, would uh, get pulled into this filter so we can pull from this list if we have a JIRA Palooza we don't have like um, things that people have specifically asked to discuss. Um, but there's still some content in here that's kind of old, like this stuff here. These are really old call notes from 2013. Um, all that stuff I think we could kind of archive. But what I would like to hear from you guys is, does the information on this page work for you? Do you need something different, something more? Um, let me go to the, the meeting notes. This is like the archive with all the past notes. So you can go back um, and view the videos where they exist. We don't always record, but we usually record. So those are linked um, on the archive page as well. So just I'll just open up the floor for any thoughts from anyone on things that you'd like to see done differently. Um, All right, so Jordy is saying um, just one thing linked to the two minute video uh, will appear is not working. Okay, so let's see. This one here. Yeah, that looks like it was going to a screencast. I wonder if it was somebody's personal screencast and it got taken down. Yeah. All right, well, I'll just delete that link. Um, I'm not sure what happened. Oops, I lost Jira completely or complex completely. Let me go back. I should bookmark it. I have Jira bookmarked. Uh, I couldn't really start it. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, so that's the broken link I need to fix. Anything else? Dee Dee says that we should consider renaming the page so it may be found in Google. Okay, what would you suggest? Just um, teaching and learning group, a period teaching and learning group? Yeah, I think we should include the name of the projects um, for Perio for because it's one of the things I've been doing. I've been doing a lot of pages for our particular institution and I've found that um, the naming conventions count uh on finding things especially friendly urls so yeah. like our url on that is you know really difficult to read so um at least yeah a period teaching and learning group i think that would be a really nice way of um improving the page notes. okay Fair warning when I'm, if I ever facilitate the meeting, somebody else has to type. 
Yeah, I'm hoping somebody will for me so I don't have to bounce back and forth. So feel free to, to take I'm jumping the in there. And... I'm jumping okay. in there. Okay, thank you, thank you. Um, so, okay. Um, I'm not going to try to make these changes on the fly. We'll just kind of keep track of things. That we want. Um, any other thoughts? It's jumping out at anybody? Okay, is there any content in here that you want to keep other than kind of this main page and the links? Um, meeting notes. A lot of the other pages in this space are old. So I'm thinking about kind of archiving in mass, except for the ones that were actually. I think that's a great idea. Um, myself, anything that we can get rid of that's no longer valid should be to show that it's a it's a live group, not something from 2013. Edie, I added your picture. <laughs> I saw. We're going to have to do new pictures all around. Um, you know, COVID yeah, that was the is not one the same. That, I had. that was the one that I had, so I stuck it on it. But if you want a different one, feel free to. I'm let working me. on it. When when we're fully back at campus, mm -hmm. we'll uh, we'll be taking new pictures because I need to do it for where I for Marist as well. So I'll, I'll get a better picture. That's a very nice picture, but yes, if you'd like a more recent yeah, picture, yeah, I looked picture. really good. But you know, um, COVID hair. <laughs> I'm just gonna leave it there. <laughs> All right, any other thoughts? This was pretty easy. <laughs> okay, so I'll, I'll make those changes. If you think of anything else, um, users should have editing rights. So for making simple changes, you should be able, as long as you're logged in to Confluence, which is your same username and password where you use to log into JIRA, you should be able to go in here and just make edits on a page. Um, if you find that you need elevated privileges for some reason, like Dee Dee, maybe if you're making larger changes on here, mm -hmm. um, or Charles, um, let me know and I'm happy to bump you up. But I think um, just basic editing rights should be available for, for all of our logged in users. So. Again, let me know if, if you need um, special permissions on anything. All right. Maybe training. <laughs> <laughs> Atlassian has lots of workshops. <laughs> I would not <laughs> presume to train on, on Confluence. I fumble around it myself sometimes. Um, all right. Charles says it's working. He's like, it's a typo. Excellent. Thank you. All right. Um, so we will move on to Jira's, and right now we only have one in our parking lot, which is from Jordy. Right here. This one. Let's see what it is. Okay, new gradebook functionality. Minimum score an item to pass the course. The instructors have requested an option to define a minimum grade in the gradebook in order to pass the course. For yeah, three items and points, and you find a minimum passing score of four. So let's see, three, ten, ten would not pass the course. Of four, seven, seven. I, I'm not understanding that math, but I get the minimum score concept. Did I miss something? Is Jordy on the call? Did you want to say anything about this one? Yeah, well, I want to try to explain. Uh, we are having a lot of uh, requests from teachers to define, for example, imagine you have three items in, in the example, the first one, A, B, and C. So the total will be 30. So the student to pass the, the course only needs uh, 15 points. Okay. But some teachers want to define, for example, for the final exam, uh, that the minimum, the minimum score would be four. So if the students didn't get that far, they wouldn't pass the 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 course. I'm not sure if I'm explaining well. So not just oh, I see. per points. item. Yeah, yes. per item they have to meet a yes. threshold. So okay. because the problem is that some students can get, for example, a 10 from A 
a 10 from B and a 0 from C and will pass the, the course because he has 20, uh, 20 from 30, it's, it's, uh, it's pass. But some, some teachers want that uh, a mandatory minimum score of an item. I'm not sure if you understand. So they right. want to, to define, for example, a four uh, from the C element the students need to get a four to pass the to pass the course a four and then get the 50 percent of the total course right. yeah that makes sense yeah, the, the, there was a, a area related the sac I, I was put in the linked issue but I, I explained it a bit here but well someone answered me and she says that, well, that you go down to the to the commentaries, you will be, <clears throat> we'll see the, the discussion. I was asked if, if, if the Jira was open or he was studying and, and in our university, a lot of, of teachers are asking for this feature, but I'm not sure if this is um, easy to implement or I'm not sure. I'm, I'm noticing in the comments that Christina had noted that she has, um, a program that requires a minimum percentage on a category. We've actually had the same use case come up and actually yeah. I think it was nursing for us as well, but it was on a category level, not an item level. Yeah, but, but I, I answered that maybe it's it's better related to an item because maybe you have in a category, you can have uh, four items, but only one item is mandatory. Imagine you have you have a uh, work and well, a discussion um, and a final exam. Usually the final exam is the is the element that the teachers wants a minimum score. But well, well, if we put in the in the categories we in the categories we can make maybe it's it's a better solution. But from my point of view, it's better to put in the in the same element when you when you go to, to an item and edit item details that you can define the points that you can define the extra credit. <clears throat> Maybe another, another option for... that, that was uh, minimum score. Or... Well, I'm not sure if other students at other universities need this feature or whatever, but in, in, in ours, there are a lot of a lot of teachers asking for this. Um, well, well I, I've yeah. never had it on an individual item level, just at the category level. Maybe yeah. we need to do both. Have the yeah, option for I, I item. Would think both would be a good idea. We just need to yeah. open probably another Jira for the category. And I, and I could see and see it being possibly necessary at an item level if if you weren't even using categories. Mm. I mean, if you're using categories and you wanted, if it was only available at the category level, you could always yeah. put an item, create a category with just that one item in there. And that would okay, work. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's a solution. You put in categories, and yeah, that would be, at least be a workaround if you only had it for categories. Yeah. If you're not using categories, then that makes it a little trickier. Yeah, if there are no categories, you have to put in in the in the item details when you define when you create an item and you define different elements. You can do it, but. It would also cause trouble if you were using, say, categories and weighting, but still wanted only one item and didn't want to affect the weight balance. Yeah, it's another problem. Yeah, you'd have to like have two. And if you were dropping a score or something, category. Yeah, there are other options to maintain the the. I don't remember. Well, if you're if you're dropping a score, then then you're probably yeah. not going to have a single a single minimum item in that category. But if say you've got, but you might added, still want the category, category exams. Right, but then it would just apply to the category. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I didn't hear what you said, Christina. I was saying if you had like a weighted category, let's say exams that were worth 50 percent um if you wanted to say only require the minimum percentage on the final exam not the midterm exam hmm. that's an argument for having it be on the item side as well as the category yeah hmm. 
I, I can see it being useful at, at both levels. Yeah, I think there's there's use cases at both levels. Kind of mix and match it. I think it, it makes sense. It would definitely provide some flexibility there. People have obviously been asking for for a while. So does anybody have any other thoughts on this one? Um, mm. Other than we need to open a new category, <laughs> Jira, for the minimum score? I'll take that away as a to-do. Um, to make a new Jira link to this one, saying that we also need it. Let's uh um all right, so we don't have anything else um that people have asked about specifically for our Jira parking lot. Um, is there anything that anyone would like to kind of bring up now, or we can kind of take a look at our Jira filter, which is pulling all the teaching and learning tagged ones? I'm going to just pick one here. This one's a feature request. So, as we usually to talk about. So, this is a feature request um, to allow an instructor to copy an existing. So, um, Several requests from instructors who use similar relatively large groups for multiple assignments with only one or two members being changed. They'd like a way to copy their existing groups so they don't have to recreate groups from scratch each time. Imagine this would be done with a new column in the groups table, copy group, where each would have a copy link. Upon clicking it, a new row would be inserted, the name having a copy number. Um, you recommended naming. Okay, so she's talking about the naming. So I, I assume from her description, it copies the members as well. That would make sense. Yeah. yeah, I think that's the whole point. Yeah. So it copies the group and all the people in it, and then you can. And if you want to modify that. Sean is suggesting duplicate. Do others see a need for this? Is this something that makes sense to folks? I think it makes a lot of sense, actually. Definitely seems like a reasonable. And then duplicate is a is a very good terminology rather than copy. Okay, cool. I like that one. I'll make notes on it afterward because I, I hate typing. Question. Everybody just sits there while I type. So. <laughs> But I'll mark this one as uh, that we um, take this feature request. Fourteen. Great. 
Um, thank you, whoever is taking it. Okay, so any other JIRAs that people want to talk about specifically? Or I'll just kind of. Um, can we do the one about, I wanted to look at the one about copying and pasting. Is that in this list or was it linked somewhere? Else? Yeah, it's in the filter list. It wasn't very far down. Um, on the first page? Scroll back up again. And text boxes. Yeah. It looks like someone has requested to not have copy paste text boxes and text. Boxes. Is that oh. even possible? Um, considering it's the rich text editor, is it not? Is the rich text editor? So I don't if, I don't know if there's a way to prevent that. Maybe some of our devs on the call. You guys know if there's a way to prevent copy paste. That's from the browsers. If they're right, if they're doing it that way. Yeah. Um, I don't think this is implementable the way it's requested. I feel like it's asking for a car without wheels. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the the rich text editors, and, and and I'm not sure. I like I'm I'm not even sure even if it was possible, if I'm on board with the idea. Yeah, I know a lot of students, especially like for the essay style style of question, they might type up their answer in something else mm -hmm. and then paste it in. Um, exactly. Because you're afraid they're going to get timed out or you know, right. Long. And, and I know, it, for I know of at least cases. one instructor. I know at least one instructor that actually sets things up that they should that they should do it that way. It is. They encourage that behavior, too. yeah. Because they they set their things up that okay, yeah, go look at the question, type out your answer, and then go back into the the assessment and and put your answer in. What did Tiffany say down the bottom? And multiple fields. Which text editor. So there's student fields, but there's also instructor fields. And then it's the CK editor globally. So six can. <laughs> I don't think she thinks it's it, it's implementable either. That would be my very quick assessment of that comment. So we have students just send in their answers by smoke signal? <laughs> that mental telepathy. <laughs> All right, so um, I'll add a comment on here that we talked about this one, didn't really see that it was A, easy to implement, or B, desirable in a lot of cases, it would not be. So, crazy about this one. Somebody, this is the same one. Yeah, somebody's putting on there okay great all right is there another one in the list that people want to talk about let me go to the video. so these are sorted by components People are more interested in. Well, 
Let's take a look at the SAC 46779. On roster accessibility? Yeah. The roster has become more important with the uh, pronouns in our institution. Yes. So, um, That's a good point. And naming conventions. So it's really important that this is meets accessibility the way we hope. In the roster tool, pronouns has a number of CSS changes. Just could do with some additional purchases. So, I need a bold styling, group stop drop down, label that's additionally unappealing, multiple looks weird, <laughs> user not specified, pronouns in the pro section doesn't show up on their card at all. There's made up. Tab navigation. So these are the recommended improvements. All right, so move, remove bold, make label, screen reader. On. Okay, yeah, here. All right. Um, this is the card view. Is this the view that most people? It's the default yeah. view, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. It should, I really wish the list view was default, but I don't know if there's a property for that. So this is the list view. This is the one you like. It's a little cleaner. <laughs> and you can tell when someone has a pronunciation with a name that's unique. Also, is it more tab friendly? Is it? I would guess it probably is. Yeah. I'm trying to talk. I heard kind of like a times in the background. Um, yeah, I agree that bold needs to go away. It's too much bold. And um, the accessibility is, is an issue. Right. Um, now then, for the bold. And each box just, card is like three columns, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's weird. Kinda not attractive. <laughs> so for these, it says not provided. There's no pronunciation. For pronouns, it just doesn't show. That's an inconsistency. Mm. People like the not provided to show there. And then it can be read by a screen reader. Oops, I agree with that. Make label. text and roster user groups label. Do the following. Drop down contain the groups from this roster member select group filter the roster display. Use the text of member group all option to view group. Is that one? Roster user groups label. Is that something that's only in the screen reader? Because I don't see it on.
guessing that that's something that's only for the screen reader because I don't see it on the screenshot unless it's in a different view. Browns appear whether or not Biden card view. Okay, that. They're asking that the not provided show up if there is no pronoun. Yep. And um, that needs to be fixed. Or if you can't tab to it. If audio recording button of meaningful alt-text. Again, that's a flexibility issue. There's definitely. All good suggestions. Those yeah. all seem reasonable, yeah. All sound good. Anyone else have a comment on these? Comprehensive. Um, yeah, Dee, Dee you also had a, a thought that you prefer the list view as default. That was I know that obviously that's personal for my institution. But what does anybody else think? Does anyone know if there's a way to set the default to property? I don't know if there's a property that handles that or not, but it seems like it would be nice to be able to set the default. Yeah, to set the order at least, so it defaults to one and then you still have the other two options, but. Even like a per user default. And choose your default calendar view or something. As an instructor, that's an interesting idea. Yeah, Dee, I would encourage you to open in Jira on that. It's definitely beyond the scope of this one. This one is. So we'd need a new one, but I do think that's a good option. Especially since more and more people are using them. Okay. Oh, and one thing in the roster, it doesn't show up. I noticed when I went in here, I was looking for that pronoun feature. And um, it's actually under name pronunciation. Yeah. Which is weird to it me. It is. <laughs> is anybody else dream it that that's not a intuitive place to find that? Yeah, that needs to be. So that I think should be moved, I, but where should it go? Should it go under basic? Should it have its own section? What, what do you guys think? I think it's fine with the name pronunciation. Just maybe the heading needs to be changed. So it's, you know, name and pronouns or something like that. Or pronunciation and pronouns. Yeah. But I, yeah, I was kind of thinking the same thing that that it could be included in that same area. I mean, coupling it with with the pronunciation makes sense, but the labeling needs to change a little bit somehow. And that descriptive text would, would have to change as we well. We need some descriptive text here, because this is all related to the pronunciation. Yeah. Probably need a little something for pronouns and maybe Put it closer to the item that it's describing. Maybe move the pronouns below the pronunciation stuff. So do folks like 
name, pronunciation, and pronouns as the label. Mm -hmm. Bill is saying this contribution came from NYU and they decided to put it in the profile. It was in the spec. I think it would be good to move it to your area in the top right side in the account preferences. Oh, yeah, from here. Yep, right. <clears throat> Correct. So we I can mean, go to preferences. It's, it's so just an drop. idea. That's interesting. Mm, very. I mean, why is in the profile? I mean, NYU decided to put that information in the profile, but at the end, the profile tool is something different. This is more related to the user, uh, more than that the profile. So, I mean, well, me, I disagree. Is... I think the profile is is um, it's all about the individual. It's their name, their contact information, preferences, or how they want to be contacted, um, and how they want to interact like their time zone and their language, but it's not about them. I think it makes sense in profile because it's, it's about me. If I'm doing my profile, uh, my name is pronounced. This is how I want to be referred I usually find that information in the profiles, in other platforms. Like in other platforms, when I go to my profile, I see that kind of information. I mean, in the preferences, but. It's just an idea. I think I can understand the argument for both. Um, I wonder if this do we have any mind. Do we have any indication as to what other similar platforms do? I mean. In other platforms, when I access my preferences or my account preferences, I see inputs like this, like your pronoun and your pronunciation. And profile is it, more. Does the profile, it also have more yeah, of like your account information, like your name and other stuff like that in your preferences? I mean, at the end, all the whole idea of the profile tool is more about uh, an internal social network more than something related to the account or the preferences, but I mean. Well, I think the thing for a profile also is the profile is surfaced in the roster and in other tools where the profile information shows up. So it's more visible to other users in the system and you want your name and your, your pronouns to be visible in those places. Your preferences don't show up for other people. But I do agree that it would be nice to be able to get to it from here. Well, you can get to profile, but you have to kind of know that your pronouns are in there. So I don't know. Maybe people just need to kind of discover that that's where they live. I do think there's general agreement on the labeling. I'll open a Jira on that. Um, I don't I know that I'm sold on, on moving it to preferences. I like it under profile. Others may have different opinions. Dispute me. <laughs> that was kind of an aside off of this one. So I need to open a new ticket. Did somebody put that in the notes? Yeah. I'm working on it. Um, okay, cool. Is this one that people want to talk about, this next one, or is this one we already looked at? Four six nine four four. Is that the one we were looking at? Or is that a new one? That one. Sign up. Provide a counter in form title. Sign up tool usage would be simpler. 
if in addition to the name of the student, it also registered a simultaneous counter, which could be updated every time someone enrolls in an item. It would allow people to easily check if there's room available instead of not having to count enrolled students one by one, which is slow and error prone. This is a total of registered students and would allow for the exam copies, number of people to distri distribute, et cetera. Okay, so this is Is that how they want it to show? Like how many uh, mock up or is that like a screenshot? Top of the Um, that's the result expected. Okay, so um, so this is it, it counts it up for you. Yeah, I, I think that makes sense. What do other folks think? Did others use um, sign up in this way? Is this something that resonates with anyone? It seems to make sense to me, but I don't really sign up like this myself. So I think I can see the re reasonableness of having a, a counter there. I, I guess I can on also the join, see on the join link. Is there like does it tell you how many spaces are left? This more for the instructor, if the instructor is adding people manually. Uh, I can't actually remember. I would go look, but I'd have to set up a whole sign up event. <laughs> um, let's see. Are you saying before you enroll in an item, you can easily check if there's room available? Seems to make sense to me. Um, I don't have an objection to it. Not like anybody else has an objection either. So. Give it a thumbs and up. Some, ah, thumbs up. Um, so I will make a note to that effect. Looked at it, and it sounded good. So um, we've only got about eight minutes. Um, so I'm going to, unless there's like a burning JIRA that somebody really wants to talk about, I'm going to suggest that we end just a smidge early. OK with everybody? I'll take silence as agreement. Um, so um, hopefully we will have a demo next time. Um, for our March 2nd teaching and learning call. I think the second is the next one. Um, I believe, I want to say Hacks is going to do a demo, but there should be an Aperio project demo, and I will announce it in advance. Um, so part of the time, at least you know, 15 or 20 minutes or so, will be demo. Um, and then if we have any time left over, we can uh, either talk about the demo or we can talk about JIRAs, whatever um, is, is um, productive at that point. But um, we had a survey that went out, and I sent a survey out to all the other Imperial project leads to see if they wanted to come to teaching and learning to try to encourage more um, cross projects 
collaboration uh, and see if maybe they could like you know come and talk to TNL and show us what they're working on and maybe get some ideas. Hi, folks who do, who regularly attend. So, um, so hopefully that will be a demo for next time. And again, I'll announce it in advance if it's something that you really want to see or you want to encourage others to come to um, that don't normally attend. Uh, if you think that they might be interested, please encourage folks to attend and check it out. I do also post the recording on YouTube so you can catch it later if you miss it live. Um, okay. That's all I've got for you guys today. Thank you for attending, and hopefully we'll see you again in March. Everybody, bye. Thanks, Wilma. Bye. You are currently the only person in this conference.